Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to move on to <laughs> some special selections for the weekend, as we do most weekends. I don't know why I can't talk today. We're going to figure out if I can actually get some analysis together at the end of this. This one comes at us from Indigo Raven. It says, uh, hi, and thanks for doing the Garen H Gavin Harrison request last year and shouting me out in the video. I really enjoyed the channel and I loved your analysis. My request is Retro Vertigo by Mr. Bungle. It's not as chaotic or intricate as their typical stuff. They can't really be defined as, at all in terms of genre, but it's a beautiful song overall that I just love and I hope you will too. So, let's, uh, let's get into this. I... <laughs> We've only done one Mr. Bungle song so far, and it was extremely chaotic, so I can't <laughs> really imagine them without that sort of energy. Well, maybe the energy is still present. Maybe the chaos is just missing. I don't know. Let's get into this. Let's see what's going on with uh, Retro Vertigo by Mr. Bungle. Okay. I love those full stops there and the chord work. Yeah, this is an interesting song. It kind of reminds me of Stephen Wilson's uh, Raven. Where it's more about the lyrics and the music's just there for the atmosphere. That percussion track is... Is that beatboxing? Alternating between major and minor is just giving this like the super bittersweetness, but I feel like overall it's fairly negative. For some dissonance there. Good editing choice there as far as the video goes.
like how this section is recontextualized with the extra instrumentation. Interesting stuff right there. Uh, the music video is a, a, a bit wild. <laughs> um, but we're here to talk about music, so let's talk about the music. Um, so I mentioned earlier that this reminded me of Stephen Wilson's Ravens. I think the song might have been something about crows. Uh, the crow that never talks, crow that never sings. Hmm. I think it was something along those lines. Anyways, uh, I see a lot of uh, similarities here in that it's a song that's heavily carried by the vocal work and the musical work is extremely repetitive and designed primarily with one goal in mind and that is to set the stage for the lyrics to be sung over. Um, and the music, I think, does a very good job of creating this atmosphere. There is uh, a lot of tension in the music uh, the one section, I think there's really only two sections to the song, uh, and the one section, I don't know if it was the, which one it was, but it certainly alternated between major and minor chords to create uh, a strong sense of dissonance and tension, as well as a fair bit of resolution without actually providing a strong resolution that would end it. It makes that section feel extremely cyclical. There's not really a beginning or an end um, to that chord progression, and I think that's extremely intentional. It's it's to provide something a bit cyclical, looping, if you will. Um, and with that, we end up having um, a song that almost feels cyclical and looping. I can't really tell you <laughs> if there was a verse or a chorus. The whole song just kind of feels like it happens. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else gets that. Uh, the song structure was sort of uh, an enigma for me. I can't, in in retrospect, figure out, uh, you know, what was one or the other. It's just kind of the song exists, which is really cool. I can't really say that that's... I mean, usually when I can't figure out the progression, it's because uh, it's either something extremely noisy and chaotic, like when we checked out uh, Russian Circles, I think it was, um, or it's extremely proggy, and there's just so many sections that, you know, remembering the progression is sort of a, a Herculean task for a first-time listen. But for here, like I said, there's only two sections, but I can't really figure out when they change. They sort of bleed into each other, and it sort of just feels like the same thing being played through the whole song. And once again, I want to bring this up that I think that's awesome that they created a five-minute song that really only works on one to two ideas. They don't really change. There's not too much metamorphosis within the music, and the song keeps my attention. Now, I don't know how much of that could be attributed to the music video. Uh, I did end up uh, getting captured in, you know, being enthralled by what was happening visually a few times. Um, so that may have uh, also made the song more bearable um, for the for the full length of it. I don't know. It's it's I'm not saying that the song wouldn't have kept my attention otherwise, but the music video did keep my attention and the story that was being told in that, um, you know, kept my attention there. So can't uh, can't really say that I, I enjoyed this in the vacuum of just the music, because unfortunately, I don't have any experience with just the music. Um, so, yeah. 
but I, I have to, like I said, I have to give props that I never once felt like I was bored or wanted something new to happen. However, that also lends to their orchestration, or sorry, yeah, their orchestration, their instrumentation, the way that they continue to add layers and sections. It felt like we had, uh, you know, one idea and then we shifted to the next idea. And then when we came back to the first idea, they added a couple of embellishments to it. And every time we, we cycled through this, there was more embellishments being added. Until finally at the end, we have a full band complete with, um, you know, full drums. Uh, the instruments actually have width and volume to them. Um, I think we had... A, Every instrument that was played at one time was present except for maybe the xylophone. I don't remember. I know specifically at the end when we had all the instruments in, though, we had both the beatboxing uh, percussion and the drum kit percussion. And the, the beatboxing was quite a bit down in the mix. I'm not even really sure how I picked it up because I was not expressly looking for it. Uh, but I, I snagged probably like a hi-hat kind of sound once and then I was like oh is that still going on uh, I think that's what happened but yeah it was pretty cool that they uh, continued to use the beatboxing throughout um, so it makes me think that the xylophone was probably there at the end as well I just missed it um, speaking of that yeah I don't know how I forgot this there is one section uh, that uh, escapes the back and forth of the rest of the song, and that's the xylophone build up to the explosive finish there. And yes, that was beautifully done. Um, xylophones as a whole sort of get associated with horror, I would say, violence in some way. Um, I don't know where this comes from, when it originated. Um, but I do know, like, as far back as I can remember, I think it's the Halloween franchise from, like, the 70s or 80s. Uh, was that the one that used the violin for its theme song? I don't remember. Anyways, violins to me have always sort of been outside of, you know, big classical arrangements, but usually a solo violin. Uh, it typically has some sort of creeping nature to it. I, it's just a bias I have with that sound when it's by itself. Uh, maybe it's just a, the childlike nature. Xylophones are like children's toys. Uh, aside from, you know, like orchestral xylophones. Uh, you know, children's first musical instrument is often a xylophone because, you know, you just beat on it. So, um, and they make like, you know, children's xylophones with colors and stuff. So. I don't know if any of this, how much of it has to deal with the way that I view that, but xylophones to me, I typically associate with some sort of in, impeding danger, especially when the music is haunting and dissonant like this one became. The xylophone started off uh, fairly in tune with uh, the guitar that it was playing against, and then it slowly just like came out of, uh, you know, intonation with it. Maybe it was playing a half step uh, around it and it started to become really tense and then of course the ex the you know the explosive moment happened um, and all the instruments came back and it was really cool I mentioned about the recontextualization there at the end where we we were utilizing older ideas but in the new light of a full wide sound and uh, it's really cool to see something that sounded um, Maybe not necessarily vulnerable, but meek uh, at the beginning, and ended up becoming almost anthemy near the end. It was it was full of strength, and it was the same exact line. It was just how it was performed, and the instrumentation utilized to play those notes. So yeah, that was really cool. I dig that. Anytime that we can have any sort of uh, recontextualization and even embellishment. Uh, you know, that core line is what persevered through from the beginning to the end, but also we had all the extra layers on top of it that helped also recontextualize it aside from just the texture recontextualization. So, yeah, lots of really cool things there to kind of tie this whole song together and, uh, you know, bring it into a, a complete work of art. 
So yeah, that's that's definitely an interesting side of Mr. Bungle that I would not have assumed was <laughs> out there, given the other Mr. Bungle song we've listened to. I don't remember what it was, but uh, it was very chaotic, and I kind of remember, like, haunting circus music. <laughs> I don't know why that's coming to mind, but that's what I'm thinking of when I think of Mr. Bungle, so... Yeah, it's really cool to see this other side of them. This is where you guys come in, though. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you thought of Mr. Bungle's Retro Vertigo. I want to thank Indigo Raven for uh, suggesting this to me, allowing me to see this other side of them. And, uh, yeah, I definitely appreciate them a little bit more. I see that they have a lot of variety in their, in their musical talents. So. Uh, there's a description box above the comment section if you want to check out anything adjacent to the channel, such as the Discord server or the Patreon campaign. Uh, there's a like, subscribe, and a bell button underneath that. If you could click those, they help out the channel immensely. We're almost at 15k. I think we have like 100 to go. So, yeah, that would be pretty cool. I don't know, uh, I don't know what to do at 15k, but I guess we'll do something. <laughs> if you want to see me do something at 15k faster, tell people to subscribe. <laughs> Uh, I don't usually push subscriptions. I get really awkward. I get like these awkward laughs. It feels weird for me to tell people to subscribe to me. I usually just do my thing. And then if you like it, you you know, you already know. That's that's what you do on YouTube. You subscribe to people you like. <laughs> I don't feel like I need to tell you to do that. Oh, man. All right, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. UTC, with uh the next special select yeah man i was just blanking out i'll be back tomorrow 5 p.m eastern standard time with the next special selection track and then monday we're starting modern prog rock which is a bit in contrast the last time we did modern prog i did not put any specific specifier at the end and inadvertently we had some people a little upset that we ended up primarily focusing on prog metals um stuff like between the buried and me and um I think Haken showed up that week too. And uh, so this week I'm specifying rock. We're looking at stuff that is evolved uh, from the classic prog stuff like Yes and Genesis and King Crimson and kind of seeing where modern bands are taking those similar ideas. Not necessarily moving towards the, uh, you know, let's smash a hundred genres in here and, and, put some screaming and and just you know all the stuff that the the modern prog metal stuff does we're trying to see uh kind of how older classic prog evolved still within the rock construct though all right so like i said that'll be uh monday yeah so that wraps this one up until next time remember to be critical and not cynical of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning afternoon or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos.